Now we need to formulate our solution to this problem. Let's begin by asking ourselves what type of problem we're dealing with. Well, right off the bat, we already decided that we're doing a steady state problem. So we're going to be using our flowchart to help us with solving this problem. Now, we're also given two temperatures and told to find the heat flow through our pipe in terms of the difference between these two temperatures. Because there's no bulk flow within the pipe material, we can assume that this problem is simply some type of conduction problem. Okay, so let's go to our steady state flow chart and determine how many ways that we have to solve this problem. So we need to first determine whether or not there's heat generation. So because the problem doesn't even mention heat generation, we can pretty much assume that there isn't any. So we head down the no heat generation path and we're left with two ways to solve this problem. Through a from scratch approach or using a resistance analysis. Okay, so now we have to make a choice. We have to choose either our resistance analysis or our from scratch approach. So for this problem, it's pretty obvious that we won't be using the from scratch approach because the problem specifically states to find an expression for the steady state heat flow in terms of the temperature difference and the total resistance. So the problem mentions resistance, so it's pretty obvious that we need to use some type of resistance analysis. We're also given two temperatures and a thickness from which we can determine the resistance to find the heat flow. So again, the resistance analysis is the best approach for this problem. In this problem, we're told to consider the convective resistance as well as the conductive resistance. Now we need to determine if these resistances are in series, parallel, or some mixed configuration. So if we consider heat being lost through the pipe material out into the bulk fluid, we know that any heat being lost in the pipe material, so the heat flow in the pipe material, must equal the heat flow in the bulk fluid due to conservation of mass and energy. So if we had two resistances, the resistance due to the pipe material, and the resistance due to the bulk fluid, heat needs to flow through both of these resistances. And because of what we just talked about, because we know that the heat flow through this, at this point, is equal to the heat flow through this point, we can determine that these two resistances are in fact in series. Now let's talk about our geometry. So it, the problem says that we're dealing with a cylindrical geometry. So our conductive resistance must equal um, our equation for resistance for a cylinder, which is ln r0 over ri divided by 2 pi kl, where l is the length of the cylinder into the page. We also know that the convective resistance is equal to 1 divided by the heat transfer coefficient times A, where A is the surface area or the outer surface area of our pipe. Okay, so let's talk about how we're going to find our heat flow equation, which is just Q equals the change in temperature over the sum or the total resistance. So all this equation is saying is that the heat flow between any two points, so the heat flow say at the inner surface and the heat flow at the outer or in the bulk fluid um, is equal to the difference between their temperatures over the total resistance between these two points. 
which is just the resistance in our conduct in our conductive layer in our pipe and the resistance in the bulk fluid because the conductive and convective resistances are in series the total resistance is simply the sum of the conductive resistance and the convective resistance so we can write this total resistance as the sum of the conductive resistance due to the pipe plus the convective resistance due to the air.